Hey, remote professionals, we have a new job opening here today. This is going to be for folks located in EMEA. Before we get ahead, uh, go ahead and get started on this one, guys, do note we are an online job board. We highlight remote and hybrid job, uh, job opportunities around the globe. So if you don't like the job that we're covering today, feel free to head to remoteprofessionalnetwork.com and you can check out our other job openings or you can also see some of the other jobs that we posted in video form as well. So for this one, guys, this is going to be a, re a remote customer success onboarding specialist located in EMEA. EMEA stands for Europe, Middle East, and Asia. Uh, sorry, not Asia, Africa. All right, so Europe, Middle East, Africa, okay? This role requires always being available during 8 to 5 p.m. working hours in the EMEA region. They are open to a range of time zones. However, preference will be given to candidates who can confidently cover this. So if you apply to this position, guys, just keep in mind that if you are someone that can commit to working these time zone hours, they're going to put a preference on you as a candidate. So it sounds like you don't need to be seated in, in anywhere specific in EMEA. You just need to be able to work these uh, time zone hours. Okay, this is going to be a full-time position. And the pay is going to be about $102,300 per year. And a description about this uh, company, Float. Float is the world's leading software for teams to plan their time. And behind it is a world-class team looking for onboarding specialists to join them. From the USA to the UK, Canada to South Africa, our engineering, product, marketing, insights, and customer success teams work asynchronously helping brands such as Airbnb, BuzzFeed, Ogilvy plan and manage their time uh, better. So it sounds like this is a time management tool, guys. It may, you're going to be using this to help other companies um, kind of onboard and learn how to use this and apply it to their own teams. So again, if you, uh, just right off the bat, if you're somebody that's maybe a teacher that you're looking to change careers a little bit or you have some experience coaching, training, or just doing any type of teaching, um, this, not my, this would be a really good uh, transitional job for you. A lot of your skills are going to translate well into um, onboarding specialist kind of positions. And as a career path as well, this tends to be a pretty remote-friendly career path. So as you get more promotions and move on in your career, you'll probably see uh, quite a few opportunities that stay remote. Okay, so Float is a self-funded, profitable, uh, and growing if you're aligned with the, with their values and are looking to join a team that's passionate about helping others work and live more productively, they want to hear from you. They also have a link here, guys, just a few tips from the CEO to make sure your resume stands out from the crowd. So make sure that you definitely click on that, guys, and, and read it. They're basically telling you how they want you to apply to this position. Um, so make sure you do that. Why they are hiring for this role. Float is building up a customer success team at Float with a new team focused on onboarding and training. And they're looking to increase support for the EMEA region specifically. So this team is going to help out their newly activated customers and help them get the most value out of Float. And they're also going to help with resource management. You're going to be joining a small team to help build their team processes and culture and have a direct impact on the company's maturity and success. So this is this is always a, an exciting kind of part about uh, startups, guys, or smaller companies, is that you kind of get you're able to get your hands on a lot of projects and work with a lot of things, which can really be great for your career because they, they, you can then say that you have experience. You're going to get uh, you know, you're going to get your feet wet in a bunch of other areas that you might not have the opportunity to in larger companies. So if you're uh, interested in that kind of environment, this will be a good position for you as well. Okay, so so far. They've succeeded by putting their customers first. Always a good idea. Their onboarding and training focus helps customers not only realize the value of Float, but also creates processes for organizations to plan and track time. They're looking for someone that is excited to be a part of this foundational team within a growing and scaling company. And so it's always good to get on brand new teams, guys, especially like this. Um, they're not launching a new product or anything. They're launching this team to support a product that is already succeeding. So... Uh, it's a pretty safe position, and also, too, if it's a new team, that, that, that means that there are going to be opportunities to advance pretty quickly inside of your team's new positions, management, et cetera, are going to be created that are going to roll up into this team. So if you do a great job, you are going to definitely uh, succeed here. You're going, to see, you're going to be rewarded, it sounds like. Okay, you're going to be working asynchronously with a bright, dedicated team from across the globe with a strong focus on, ta uh, take, uh, on taking complex problems and creating solutions. 
that feels simple and intuitive for their customers. Things that you're going to be responsible for, guys, as far as the specific position of the onboarding specialist, you're going to work with the team of onboarding specialists to train and onboard new customers at scale and help them reach their goals by getting the most value out of Float. Their customers are typically teams within larger organizations, such as creative departments within a tech company or the Sydney office of a large advertising agency. These teams love Float, but a big challenge is introducing a new tool for resource management and managing that rollout internally, especially as they build out complete processes, responsibilities, and structures from scratch. So a lot of times, guys, what will happen is in companies, they might bring on a tool, for example, um, Salesforce, right? Everybody's familiar with Salesforce. A lot of companies will bring in Salesforce and have a, have a dream that everybody's going to use it a certain way, but they don't invest in actually um, you know, onboarding their, their employees to the tool so nobody actually uses it, and it winds up being a big waste of money. Um, so these teams are, are typically created, the onboarding teams, to find out ways that you can implement it in these companies um, and really kind of get uh, employees leveraging the tool that the company just purchased, which is Float. Okay, so you're going to work with the team to create a one-to-many approach for training through avenues like webinars, video libraries, customer academies, and onboarding guides. There will also be a segment of customers that receive a more hands-on, one-on-one experience a typical day would include running a webinar targeted to a group of new customers to lead them through early activation and onboarding. You will also create new content to help the customers learn new features, create their own resource management policies, or set a timeline for rollout to a new team. So you're also going to be writing, guys, which is actually a pretty good skill that you can pick up. You're going to be basically building some um, RF, uh, sorry, not RFP. You're going to be building FAQs, maybe a, kind of a customer database section, uh, and training things where you can actually point customers to tools that they can self-serve and things like that. So that's going to be a big thing you can write on your resume. So early on in this job, you're going to be focusing on learning the float product and understanding what resource management looks like for the customers. You'll be creating onboarding content that can be used at scale. You're going to be understanding the needs of the current book of business. More on than that, you're going to be identifying expansion opportunities for growth, recognizing churn risks and mitigation techniques, establishing handoff procedures to other teams like sales support or operations, and you're also going to create product education campaigns as well. To be successful, they are looking for someone with proven experience in an onboarding or customer success role, working with mid-market customers for a SaaS product, you should be comfortable training and onboarding new customers in both a high tech, uh, sorry, high touch experience with individual customers, as well as be able to scale the support to 100 plus accounts. You also help create processes and workflows that help us improve our customer experience, such as creating seamless handoffs to other customer success teams, identifying opportunities for product education, and implementing touch points that impact retention. Skills, skills. Position guys, they want somebody who has uh, customer onboarding and training or customer success management experience, encompassing early onboarding to churn and renewal management, experience creating one to many content for uh, customers from early setup to product education and ongoing support, drive to be the customer's advocate for their needs and close and close the feedback loop with the product team, strong communication skills in both written communication that drives value as well as clear and concise discussions during customer meets. They'd like you to have the ability to translate technical concepts as well to different skill levels and uh, customer types. So, right, guys, kind of taking the information from Float and dumbing it down to somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience, things like that. If you don't have a full, if you don't have exactly, guys, uh, you know, customer onboarding experience or success management, but you've worked in a customer success role, uh, customer spe- uh, you know, service uh, or other type of role, where you're interacting with customers, I'd put that experience down. It's, it's going to translate pretty well in this position. Um, this one, you're going to be focusing also on education and training. So if you have customer service experience, training, coaching, teaching experience, uh, along those lines, those are, those are going to melt pretty well together to uh, perform this role well. I bet you'd be able to, you'd be able to, okay. Uh, float 
as a fully remote team, they're looking for someone comfortable with asynchronous communication as a default, which means you have previous remote experience and are comfortable using tools like Slack, Loom, and Linear to communicate as needed. Uh, don't worry, you're going to have significant deep work time since they have very few meetings. So Float is an anti-meeting company. Definitely, guys, what this means is as asynchronous communication. They are a remote-first company, so that means that people are located all over the world. Um, you might get in at a certain time period, right, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. in the EMEA region, and you might have to work with somebody who's located in the United States who is working at different hours, so you're going to have to make sure that you keep track of your communications pretty well. All right, Egan, all right, Egan, all right. Why join us section? Again, This the pay for this role is going to be roughly 102000 and a level three. You can ask your recruiter more about that. That's probably just a salary band range. So from here on, guys, you'll probably start here. And as, as you move on in your career, maybe become a um, a senior onboarding specialist. You're going to get another bump up, and you'll probably hit the like 110, 120 range uh, for the next role. As far as the hiring process goes for this position, you'll find a lot of information about their interview process and what it's like to join the global team. But the hiring process for this role, you're going to have an initial first meet. If your application is shortlisted, you will have a 15-minute meeting with Linda or Ramina from the talent team. This meeting gives them an opportunity to learn more about your experience and also allows you to ask any questions you have about the role. You're also going to have a coworker interview. You'll meet with Emily, a senior account manager, for a 45-minute interview that will deep dive into your related skills and experience. You're also going to have a manager interview. They take a very collaborative approach to hiring, so you'll meet with Allison, the director of customer success at Float, for a 45-minute interview, and you're also going to have a founder interview. So as a final step in the process, you will meet with Glenn, Float CEO, for a 30-minute interview. Definitely, guys, you always want to make sure that you have great questions prepared, but definitely if you get an opportunity to meet with the actual founder of a pretty successful company, um, make sure you bring your A-game. Have some intelligent questions that to, to bring to the table. Make sure you do research on the company. Try to research, you know, projects that they're working on now, so that, that you can actually kind of um, uh, speak to what they're thinking of and things that they're working on. Right. So, for example, um, we can see you're going to be an onboarding specialist, right? So you might be able to find news articles or some information on the Float website regarding new clients that they're bringing on. Maybe, for example, they noted that they brought on Airbnb. Uh, maybe you could ask about some if they're having any specific issues with implementing this tool with specific companies. And also, it looks like you're going to be working with mid-sized companies here. So uh, you could kind of fine-tune your, your questions and your insight to that. So keep that in mind, too. Okay? So that's going to wrap it up for this one, guys. It looks like the average uh, interview is going to take about 29 days uh, from the first interview to a job offer. You can go ahead and find some more information about this. We will leave a link for you to apply to this position in the comment section below and also the description. But if you did not like this job, you can go ahead and check out this next video.